Iranian hardliners blame pornography and sexual frustration for mass protests. Recently, pro-regime supporters in Iran blamed sexual agitation, computer games, and remote learning for the ongoing protests. This is an unusual addition to the standard conspiracy that social unrest is caused by Western and Israeli backing, a belief frequently pushed by Ayatollah Khamenei and his lackeys. Ali Akbar Raifipur, head of the Masaf Institute and a leading perpetuator of this venereal misinformation, <laughs> stated that teenagers who were at home and couldn't go anywhere during the pandemic became sexually aroused by the internet. And now the mass uprising seen throughout the nation is an expression of their sexual repression. Raifipur added that the street protests are the result of, quote, discharging of sexual urges onto the issue of women. Raifipur, along with other pro-regime uh, political figures, is dismissing the protests as a sexually driven violent campaign in, uh, inspired by Western media. A former Iranian parliament member, uh, Hamid Raisi, said that, women, that the women protest because they want to, quote, sleep with someone each night and behave like animals. Mohammed Sadegh, uh, Kushaki, a professor at Imam Sadiq University and a Khamenei loyalist, said, quote, some of these young people and teenagers who are seriously uh, harmed by a lack of identity and values are were at the core of the recent social unrest. This guy, this guy has started a shitstorm with this comment. You have no idea how big this was, like, because... Oh, really? He added so much fuel to the fire. Like, if you want to demonstrate how the people who are pro-regime are out of touch, like, it's one thing, like, so people are saying that we have to protest because there's no one listening to us. There's like, there's all avenues of change or talking to anybody that will respond to anything that we want is completely close right and the regime always pretends like no 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 we take you seriously we take complaints seriously come talk to us these people who are in the streets they are just like they're mobs they're rioting and breaking things people who actually genuinely want to change they come and we understand people have frustrations we're not out of touch we come and listen and we know there are problems and we fix things when we, we we accept that we are not perfect and blah, 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 right? So if you wanted a symbol and a representation of where the young people are at with their complaints, okay, and where the pro-regime people are at with what they think this is about, you could not have a better way to demonstrate it. This is why even some pro-regime people came down on this guy. They're like, you are making us look so bad. Shut the hell up. It was really bad, right? Because like, it's a, such an insult. It's such an insult. First of all, a lot of it, let me actually show you a picture of what the pro-regime people have drawn to say what this pr protests are about. Because the pro-regime people think that this is the woman who seemingly are leading these protests are actually being put there by men who want degeneracy and that's right women like because they see women taking off their hijab as women going naked to their eyes this is like naked and degeneracy right and they're saying these are a lot of young people who are who want degeneracy and sexual free liberation and they're going to come after our daughters they're going to come after our sisters and maybe even after our wives right so and this is what they want right and they look at the song by Shervin, which has now become the song of the revolution which which baray which is what this revolution is for which is part of it says for my sister for your sister for our sisters and then also the part that says for being able to kiss without fear in the street right and like and they were like oh so you they're want coming for your sisters they're coming for our sisters this is what this is about they want to kiss oh my, my sister God. like that like susie i was on the persian show 
and we had the pro regime guy come on the show and he was like telling us this or like oh so you would you bring your sister to me to ki- for me to kiss like is that what you want and people are like like because they don't understand that <laughs> because you know if you say for our sisters they think like i will take my sister and give it to you for you to do whatever you want but because they don't understand consent some of these people they think like like That's I could just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, but, would would like, you give you your sister to me? And I'm like, I, like, does she like you? She can kiss you. I don't care. Like, you, like <laughs> they don't even understand how liberalism works. They think like our version of liberalism is like, come have sex with my sister. They don't understand that our version of liberalism is that she decides. Not like freedom doesn't mean that I will force my sister to be for you to to have to be for you to be free with my sister like no like i mean what so uh, did you did so... you laugh in his face yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but the, let me show you let me show you what their understanding of this revolution is this is yeah, the exactly. cartoon that they came up with right they think this is what it's about like oh because there was another pro regime guy that made a huge um you know backlash but he said that to, today they're coming for your hijab tomorrow they come for your underwear right because he says what makes you think that people who want to take off your hijab would stop at hijab okay it's like there is no once you let go of your hijab tomorrow they will take off your shirt and they will not stop until they take off everything they take off your underwear right that's literally what he said and people are like iran is literally one of only two countries in the world that has mandatory hijab okay it's only iran and afghanistan and no other even islamic country has mandatory hijab okay let alone and people are not going naked there <laughs> that's what we're talking about right but this is they're saying they think that the men are pushing the girls to take off their hijab because they want to see a society where they could do something like this that's what they're that's, well, what that's they why they frame all the women who are fighting in this in this uprising as prostitutes because it's a way of saying like you're basically yes. being pimped out by men for their own benefit and i read this really interesting article in iran wire about how historically accusations of sexual degeneracy has been one of the main points of trying to delegitimize oppositional movements to the point that they accused like MEK, for those who don't know, it's an opposition group. It, it's a group that opposes the Iranian regime, but it's also like a literal terrorist cult. They, like, they would accuse the MEK of sexual degeneracy and they sleep around and they like, you know, force the members to sleep with all the men and all this stuff. Meanwhile, they literally had segregated, like they're in an Islamic group still. So they had segregated housing for everything. And they even executed one of their members for a completely consensual sexual relationship with another female member you know so clearly their their standards of what is sexual degeneracy is pretty different in comparison to like what ours would you know like and but this is a very frequently used accusation but compared to well, actually, I actually want to talk about that in a second. I, I really want to read the full quote from Ray Poor because there's part of this quote, Armin, that had me going, what? Okay, <laughs> wait a second. Here's the full quote. Quote, during two years of COVID, uh, teenagers sat at home and couldn't go anywhere. Then they were sexually aroused by the internet. Now, what is happening in the streets? It is the discharging of sexual urges onto the issue of women. What is happening is that these two factors have met. This, this, Armin, this made me go, bruh, what? Okay. He continues. The generation of war, meaning the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s, the generation of war fired RPGs to discharge these urges. (laughs) Now, where can our young people discharge them? That's why we have these strange fire jumping festivals. Okay, so there's so much to unpack there. One, I'm like, you discharge RPGs to get rid of your sexual repression? Bro, what? Second of all, fire jumping festivities. Like, why do you have to shit on Nuru's? Like, why do you have to shit on the Nuru celebration? Oh, no, that's Chashamasuri. It's a different celebration. No, but that comes right before Nuru's, right? 
yeah yeah well it's, it's the wednesday before so it's part yeah, of yeah. the overall celebration okay. that's what i'm saying but i'm like that's why we have these strange festivals i'm like this is something that's been in iranian culture for thousands of years why are you acting like this is suddenly a new thing <laughs> he, he thinks he thinks people he thinks young boys are too sexually excited right and they need to express that somewhere right and when iran had war that's how i expressed it in war right now that there is no war and and he thinks that pro part of the problem is that we're not marrying boys and girls young enough like oh, the geez. age of marriage is getting older and older older and so there's a lot of sexual frustration pent-up sexual frustration that is not being released so he thinks that it's being and there's also a lot of porn on websites and stuff and they're watching it and he thinks now all of that is expressing itself in the form of protests in the streets that's what he thinks and one of the re in the interview is like if you watch it in persian he's like look they're talking their, their main chant is has women in it so obviously it's a <laughs> it's about sexual <laughs> like they say women in their chant <laughs> so it's like you know it's about women so it is about sex therefore like i mean only like it's just so weird. <laughs> and like no like he's like okay so this is how he says it, right <laughs> So it's about sexual tension. Like, look at the chant. It says, it's says, this woman, life, freedom. So women is their main theme. So this is about sexual frustration. So just because they say woman, so it's weird because it, 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 it frustrates a lot of people listening to this because they're like, we're talking about women rights. And how sick do you have to be to turn the chant about women rights? Like, oh, you guys are talking about women? You must be sexually frustrated. <laughs> like... No, you! <laughs> Only a Literally, no! <laughs> Only someone that, that's hypersexualized. Yes. That... Only. <laughs> Yeah, only a person that is so sexually frustrated thinks that anybody who, any man who talks about women must be wanting to sexually, I don't know, sexually frustrated. That's the way they're talking about women. So it must, like, you're projecting. Like, this is like, I don't know, this is self. It's so interesting, self -report. though, because there's this, like, contention where especially like deeply conservative religions are supposed to be against sex in all of these fashions. And so they construct all of these practices surrounding the prevention and control of sexuality. And it usually comes in the form of how women should be treated and also expectations around dress and modesty. But when it's so overemphasized, ironically, it's actually hypersexualizing like a fixation on modesty actually is itself hypersexual hypersexuality when the showing of a wrist or a showing of an ankle is now sexual is now yeah. seen as licentious like no you're the one who is hypersexualized most people don't see someone's elbow and start to think about how they look naked what yeah or but, or people or people who refer to somebody without a hijab without a head covering as naked okay they, that's what they say that when they see somebody without a head cover like fully covered everywhere else without a head cover they call them naked so who's sexually frustrated but i have a tweet that i want to show you it's in persian let me know when i can show you because it basically summarizes everything that we're talking go about. for it okay so this tweet is in persian and so let me give you the context. There was a video that came out that showed the police uh, men in the street. They were arresting this girl who was a protester and they kind of sexually, well, it, they sexually molested her, right? They, yeah. they grabbed her ass, right? And she ran away, but she was like surrounded by a lot of men. And that video got viral because people were like really angry about this, right? Because the, the regime that says like, oh, we, we have protected you from ISIS coming out, coming after your woman. You're like, okay, you're the ISIS here. Like you are the one that we have well, to protect your woman from. And they say the sex segregation is for the sake of protecting women and their safety. Yeah, so like you're but the one special arresting. special forces sexually assault women. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? So that video went viral. And this tweet up here is by a pro-regime guy who says like basically the summary is like why are you guys upset you guys uh, why are you guys upset you guys want a sexual liberation right 
Like he said, what? Like, yeah, he's like, you guys, you guys keep pretending that you want sexual liberation. So why are you upset about this video? You guys are hypocrites. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like the, he says the same people who wanted kisses and dancing in the street and free hugs are now somehow upset at when they see a woman being, you know, sexually touched or something, right? <laughs> so this is he's like how he he's wondering how is this consistent? You guys want dancing and freedom in the streets and being able to kiss and free hug. Like there was videos of a girl giving free yeah, hugs. Yeah, it was right? super cute. And that was super cute. Like you guys want all of that. So this is the same thing, right? So the interesting thing is that the burn comes from a religious woman. So the reply is from somebody who is also religious, but she is like, you know, like, listen what she says. She says, a person that has never experienced consensual love, uh, love or has been kissed consensually or has been hugged consensually, of course, has, of course, would not understand the difference between <laughs> these two, between consensual and non-consensual love, right? So he's like, he's telling that the lady, oh, they're both ladies, actually. So this lady, this religious lady is telling that religious lady that you must have not been <laughs> consensually ever kissed or hugged to not know the difference. But anyways, it was a sick burn. And also another sign for a lot of Iranians that the they have religious people who sympathize with us, with us liberals. Like she, she's religious, she's Chaduri and everything, but she understands what we want. We don't want full like degeneracy and like all sorts of sexual behavior, including non-consensual ones, right? That's so, crazy. Yeah, but this gave gave a lot of people hope. So, so there are some religious people in Iran who understand that we have moral standards. Just because we want freedom, that doesn't mean that everything sexual like goes. Anyways, so. Yeah. Well, that must be okay. So here's the thing <clears throat> that one of our good friends, Miriam Namazi, has been whipping up a lot of controversy along with other feminine protesters for doing topless protest in opposition to the regime. And there were videos of Miriam Namazi doing topless protests that were aired on Iranian state TV. Wow. First of all, what? Okay. Second of all, so basically she and another um, woman, her name is Nilufar. I can't remember her last name, but she's Nilufar is one of the original girls of Revolution Street. So like she was doing this. She was taking off her hijab in public way, way, way before it is destigmatized to the way it is now. And she is now a refugee living abroad. And she was at a protest for Iranian freedom and she was doing topless protest. And she started to get viciously attacked, not only by regime supporters, but by the opposition. And basically because these things were aired on state TV and the state propaganda apparatus held this up as an example of, yes, look, these women do just want to get naked in the street. Look, it's not about hijab. They do want to be naked in public, which is not really what topless protest is about. And so Marilyn Lamazi in response, love her, came down and like doubled tripled down she's now doing like five times as many topless protests in support of new lufar um but armin what do you think about that Wait, do you hear about I, the whole controversy because that yeah, really so blew I, up so that the original girl that went full naked um and iranian tv like what like she didn't really... go full naked she was just topless topless okay well, I didn't see the, I just saw half of it because they weren't showing. So 
the Iranian TV really, really use that as propaganda. Be like, we told you, we told you. It's not, it's not just about hijab. They, they want to go full naked. So protect the hijab because if we don't protect the hijab, they're gonna make your daughters and sisters go full naked. Look what they're doing right now already. Okay. So by the way, the just to be clear, the naked, that was in London. The protest, Iranian protest in London, in support of uh, Iranians in Iran. Right? It was There's in been London, multiple the... topless protests around Europe. Yeah, but no, the the original one, I think that one was in London. The, no, Nilufar girl... isn't in England. She's okay, somewhere where... else. Maybe Amsterdam. Amsterdam? Okay. Maybe. So, and a lot of um, anti-regime protests are actually started criticizing her as well. Like, like, why are you doing this? You're giving the Islamic Republic of Iran the propaganda that it needs. So she, a lot of people, our side started, so she was getting attacked from everywhere, right? So she, I felt bad for her, right? But a lot of people are like, this is not the time for you to go topless because the regime wants to, because to scare, because right now the protests in Iran, there's non anti-religious people, non-religious people and religious people joining together against the regime right so a lot of people are saying we're getting a unity with traditionalists and religious people against the regime if you go topless in amsterdam or london or wherever the regime is going to show the religious people like don't support them they want to go fully naked look at that right so they're like this is not the right time for you to do this okay i'm not i'm not i'm not going to tell you whether it's right or wrong i'm just telling you what other pro regime anti-regime people are protests are, are saying but so did you see the footage that Iranian TV had of this of Maryam and um, Nilufar? Did you I see did. that footage? Did did they show they didn't show the breast, did they? Okay, what was forwarded to me, what I saw was it was like weird the the it was very strangely manipulated. It was a red cover exactly there was yeah. weird editing where you could so they, see but you could still see outlines of naked yeah breath. you can see the outline of the body but like they didn't like pixelate it but they just put like a weird red covering on it right yeah but this is this is unprecedented i was like how TV. the fuck are they showing this on state tv did they not just make everyone who see this sin yes this is like it shows how much they go against their own value when it comes to because their values they would they've never shown something like that on iranian tv on state tv like it's it has never happened like they are very very selective over and let me show you how selective they are and a lot of people call them out for hip as hypocrites they're like you break your own rules when it comes to spreading your propaganda and let me show you how strict Clearly, their rules we are. know this this is how strict their rules are. Yes. They they blurred wolves' tits. Okay. This is a. I remember this. This is an Italian football badge from Rome, and <laughs> the badge has a mother wolf. You know, this is a this is a myth in how Rome came about. Yeah. That these are the two founders of Rome who were fed by wolves. And you can see that this mother wolf, the Iranian state TV pixelated the tits of a wolf. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know because the whole philosophy behind pixelating things is because people could get aroused. I don't know who in Iran would get aroused by wolf tits. We recently, a few months ago, covered a story where they're censoring the udders on cows. Yes, they're censoring <laughs> cow udders in cartoons. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so the, yeah. crazy. I'm like, it was a, um, it was a, it was an ad for a ice cream. It wasn't even a real yes. cow. It was a cartoon cow, and the the, the udders were censored. But this is what they censor. <laughs> but they showed that woman. So again. A state TV that censors this showed showed a naked woman on, on on state TV. So the hypocrisy was like mind blowing. Yeah. Anyways, what so do you was... think of the the topless protest? <laughs> I want to read this comment. That Bar saying, a cartoon wolf. They sexualize they sexual... a cartoon <laughs> wolf. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Honestly, I don't. Um, 
it's weird to go tell a woman to cover up in Amsterdam. That's what I think. Okay. It's also, I understand where they're coming from. The people in Iran, they're like, guys, this is not the right time. We need to be united and we're going to lose the religious anti-regime people. I understand their fear. Okay. But I'm not going to go tell somebody, a woman in Amsterdam to cover up. Okay. You could go do that because I'm not going to do that. Like this is Amsterdam. let alone one of the original girls of Revolution Street that risked everything to lay the precedent that is it is literally off of her shoulders that yeah. what is occurring now is even a possible a possibility to happen. You know, there's like Marion put out a really good video about the like reasons behind tops, topless protests that I really liked. And so I was I sent Neil Lufar a really supportive message because I know she's getting it from all angles right now. Um but Armin, I think we should talk about some general Iran updates if you're ready. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so there's so much that has happened in this past week. Like, I don't even know where to start. Um, I think one thing that is really important to touch on is, one, the internet restrictions. They're going in and out, but they've, they've gotten a lot more severe. So the ability to understand what's happening is severely restricted. So one of the biggest things that started to happen is the death count now is at least 200. I think I've seen some estimates that are more like 225, and even that is likely a severe underestimate. Um, 23 children have been uh, killed, and 20 of them are boys, one of them as young as 11 years old, and three of them are girls. Um, one girl, her name is, I know the translation of it is star. How do you say star in Persian? Satare. Satare. This is so sad. Her family literally came to Iran to escape the violence in Afghanistan. And then she ended up being murdered in Iran. Um, so the violence against children is getting very severe. They There was a situation in this one province that the name I cannot pronounce. I don't know. It starts with an A. Um, and they tried to bring a bunch of girls from a girls school to a different area where they were basically going to force them to participate in a video for state propaganda, you know, to show, because we've seen unprecedented protests from students. It was like university, then it was high school, then it was like middle school. And then we see elementary school students. Okay. So they were bringing these young girls to a different location to try to make some propaganda with them. And the girls started protesting and yelling back and not complying. At which point, the security forces brutalized these girls. Like, 10 of the girls literally had to go to the hospital. And one of them died of internal bleeding. And now they're making up all of these stories about how she actually died and all this stuff saying that she had heart problems or brain problems or something or other, but people have found social media posts associated with the family that show that she was like a star swimmer, like an athlete within the past few years, like very active. So they're continuing to just like openly murder children. They cannot figure out a way to compensate from the fact that a lot of their protest, um, protesting population is coming in the forms of children and they cannot seem to come up with an appropriate containment strategy for that. Another problem is that they, the girls that they arrest in many areas, they this is what the regime calls it, openly calls it. They take the ones that they arrest and bring them to psychology centers, like psych psychiatric re-education centers. And this is what they themselves identify it as. There's been other state officials that have come out and said themselves that the majority of, that the average age of the protesters is 15. This is coming from within the state, they're saying that. On top of all of this, we're seeing a severe crackdown in Kurdistan, which is Masa Amini's home region. 
and particularly in the province capital of San Andaj. Now, there is still, because of the internet restrictions, no clear picture of what is going on in San Andaj. The reports on the ground are that it is like a war zone. The videos are crazy. You hear open gunfire all the time. Um, just bursting into residential homes to try to arrest people. And there really is no accurate picture of what's going on there. I have read some reporting that in San Andadra, Kurdistan in general, it is the possibly the first time that we have seen actually military mobilization. Because mostly it was, we're seeing these highly ideological units deployed around different cities and different provinces. But that's a really finite resource for the regime. What is a much larger resource for them is the IRGC. And so there have been some reports of actually IRGC mobilization in parts of Kurdistan. There was even some reports of um, mobilization along the border as if they were going to take action into Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, so again, I'm still really trying to figure out what the hell is going on in San and Dodge because information is scarce. And then what has happened within the past 24 hours is freaking crazy. Okay, so this is what D is saying. D is saying, what happened at the prison? I saw a huge fire reported. Whew. Okay, so less than 24 hours ago, a reports started to emerge of a fire at Evin Prison. For those who don't know, Evin Prison is in Tehran. It um, is commonly called Evin University because it is where the intellectuals, the political prisoners are imprisoned in such high amounts that people say that like, oh, you should go to university there. Um, this is also where they imprison um, diplomatic hostages. It's where they imprison dual nationals and foreign nationals for them to then use as bargaining chips on the international stage. And so and it's also notoriously overcrowded especially considering that so many detainees that have occurred through this like five weeks of uprising are now also getting concentrated there. And so as you can see in this video, like massive fires have broken out. There's no clear picture about what's happening. And yeah, like gunshots, sirens, but Armin, did you see the videos of what appear to be explosive projectiles being fired yeah. upon the prison? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It's crazy. There are videos where you can see two projectiles. It's we have no I have no idea what it is. Two projectiles clearly being fired upon the prison, followed by huge explosions. On the ground, they're reporting that the explosions were so bold that they would shatter the windows of all the houses in close range oh look here look the projectiles it, yeah see that. yep there it goes mm -hmm. and in response to me this like really shows the character of a lot of iranian people what happened when word of this started to come out people started driving towards the prison. They started driving towards the gunshots, towards the explosions to try to intervene, to try to disrupt authorities, to try to check on their family because there's no word that's coming out about what's happening. And when there were the roads were blocked so much that they couldn't drive further, they got out of their cars and started walking. Then security forces were firing upon people or trying to disrupt people who were trying to reach the prison. So they were just facing them with only rocks, firing tear gas upon people, and it like set cars on fire because of the explosives. You know, it's like on a highway and stuff. Um, 
so we still don't really know what happened. The regime state media says that what happened was that some prisoners got rowdy and set the clothing depot of the prison on fire or something. And I think they said that like no one was killed or anything like that. But really, we have no idea at this point. I woke up and I thought that maybe there would be some more information that's come out. There really isn't any anything more that's come out. I mean, th- what's very interesting is that right before this happened, okay, there are a lot of conspiracies about what's going on with Evine. For example, right before this happened, all of a sudden the internet opened very quickly. And then this happened and it closed. The second main conspiracy that I've heard is that, so the son, one of the sons of Rasam ja- Rasa, Ra- fuck, what's Rasef Johnny? Why can't I say I know his name? Rasam Johnny. Rasam Johnny, of course. Okay, sorry. So Rasam, <laughs> no, I can't say it again. Raf Sanjani. There we go. Um, He was the former president of Iran who was (coughs) cough, cough, assassinated. Um, And he had a son that was a political prisoner in Evin. But his son gets like special privileges and gets to have like furlough basically from prison. So he would go into prison like most of the week and then like Wednesday through Friday he would be allowed to go in or something. However, his brother was on Clubhouse last night talking about how this week, when his brother went on furlough, he went back to the prison to turn himself back in as he's supposed to. And this week they said, no, you stay out. Don't come back. And so people are like, why is he being kept out of the prison? And then this happened. I don't read too much. I think they're reading too much into that, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, though. <clears throat> we'll see. I think it's too soon to know what's going on right now. I just know this is a major escalation. It's only like a month after Mahsa Amini's death. And I don't think anybody ever guessed it would have, like, I'm, I'm, some people guess. I just think like it's surprising how fast things are escalating to the point now that prison, Evin prison is on fire. This is a, like things are rapidly escalating. So there's that. Uh, we did get a super. Ch- yeah, go ahead. What do you think about? The fire at Evin, though, like most people are mm-hmm. like, there's probably a massacre happening right now. I don't. That would be so stupid. I don't think it's the regime. I know a lot of people are saying it was the regime that did this. This would be shooting themselves in the foot. They're like they are desperate to show things going back to normal and look, making things making it look as if things are calm. A fire in prison in Evin prison is like signaling to the whole country that things are wacky. This would be a major self-own. I would either it's not them or they're just the dumbest people ever. Especially given that the previous revolutions started with a fire. Okay, the 1979 revolution, uh, one of the t- main two sparks that made that happen was the fire at Cinema Rex. So to start a fire in the middle of this. It's a huge signal to people that like, hey, the regime is going to topple again. This is like a lot of people are already comparing the fire in Evin prison to the 1979 fire at Cinema Rex. So, yeah, can you explain is... what that is for people that don't know? I, I, that's a lot of detail. It was just a fire mm-hmm. in a movie theater. A whole bunch of people burned alive and they blamed it on the Shah, which is stupid. Like the, I don't think the shop would do anything like that. And it just mobilized everybody against the regime until it was toppled, right? Um, so given the his lessons from history of how much fires could like lead to people like getting and how people are desperate to use symbolism from the past to mobilize today, does it a fire doesn't seem like a good idea, right? What about these like projectiles being fired upon the prison? I don't know who that is. I don't know who what that the is. the hell? Yeah, it might be people trying to free their families or, or like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't Who know. has access to... <laughs> what? Oh, they do. They do. They're like, there are already videos on how to make stuff like these. No, something oh. like that in the middle of Tehran? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I know but people me, are going willy nilly with Molotov. But I don't want to. Uh, don't say that. I don't want to say that. Don't say that on YouTube, uh, guys. We do not endorse any the making of any of these things anywhere. In the I'm world. just saying like, that it happened. That's a trigger word for YouTube. That's oh, okay. a major trigger word for YouTube. Do not use that I didn't word. Know that. Yes, that's good. Look at. We are not endorsing any form of violence here on YouTube. Please, like we're just reporting the news. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, we don't know. We have to wait. A lot of people are really quick to come up with conclusions. I just don't think right now it's we can't know any of this, right? Um Norman is saying, why are no oh thank you for the super chat, no man with the 50 rupee super chat saying, Why are no Indian Muslims talking about this? Well, Sue, I think I think like there probably are some. There, there's a lot of, there's millions of Indian Muslims. I'm pretty sure there are at least some of them talking about this. Okay, so there's that. Also, I don't know why you're, why Indian Muslims are uniquely supposed to talk about this more compared to other people. I don't know why. Do you think because it's Islamic Republic, do Indian Muslims have a response, higher responsibility compared to other? I don't think they do. I think like. You know, in people in general, it would be a good idea to talk about it. I don't think like being a Muslim makes you more responsible to talk about this. Do you do you agree? Oh wait, but yeah, don't please I don't think... butcher my name. Why? Did, how do you pronounce your name? Noman zero forty one. Noman Newman. Yeah. I did, I did. What? How else would you say it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that. Muslims should be talking about this more because otherwise it shows like hypocrisy or something. I don't think so. It's a, I mean, most Muslims don't think the Islamic Republic of Iran represents Islam anyway, so I don't know True. if that's... Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, also, Indian Muslims are Sunni. Islamic Republic of Iran is Shia. I don't. No. I just don't think like being a Muslim... I, I think it's just a general good idea to just talk about this, but no matter what your religion or lack of religion is. Um. Oh no, man. That's what I said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. feel like I'm being gaslit. People are saying cut him some slack. He's also 18. I wasn't mean. Was I mean? I wasn't mean to you. I said it very passively and calmly. I wasn't. I wasn't aggressive with them. I got that. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.